Hey guys, Anthony from Go Industrial. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to spray a garage door and some side fencing. We're gonna show you through the process of setting up, prepping the surface, prepping around the surface, so that's masking and protecting all our bits that we don't want painted. And then we're gonna show you the painting process and how to get it done quick and smart. Let's get into it. So in order to prep the surface, what we're gonna be using is our Merca Deros. So this is a random orbital 150 mil sander. It's connected to our 1230M extractor. And what this does is it enables us to have a fully dustless system. So when we're sanding, it's collecting all the dust and making sure that there's no bad dust in the air and it's not getting mess everywhere. So it's a really awesome system. The Deros is an amazing sander when it comes to getting the absolute best finish possible. You combine it with the Abronet abrasives and you just get the absolute best scratch pattern possible. So we're also running a interface pad, which if you don't know what that is, just briefly, it's basically a foam, 10 mil foam pad that goes in between the abrasive and the sander. And that allows us to basically follow concaves and edges around the garage sort of features itself. So it makes sanding really easy and it's just gonna you know, enable us to rip through this. There's some other accessories and stuff on this kit here. It's a pretty awesome kit. We have some more content around it and we're gonna be making plenty more. So if you wanna learn more about it, let us know in the comments and we'll make content for that. It might look like a bit of overkill to be using such a beefy system for you know such a little job, but it's really important that we get the surface prepped perfectly before we paint because when you're spraying on, it's gonna leave a really smooth finish and any imperfections that you leave behind under that paint is gonna show straight through. So we wanna make sure that the surface is smooth as possible before we put any paint down just to make sure we get it looking mint. So let's get into it. For those of you who do know about the Mercaderos, obviously when you're sanding, if you're coming to hard edges, you're gonna be hitting this backing pad against your surface all day. So one, it makes it a bit difficult to actually sand because you know it, it, the sander will jump around. Two, you're gonna be actually chewing out your backing pad and wearing that down a lot faster and obviously lifting your abrasives and stuff and it's just, it's not good. Merco made this pretty cool tool. It's called the Edge Protector. Super simple. It's basically just a clip-on attachment that goes over the top here. And it basically just puts a small gap between the backing pad and the edge of whatever you're sanding. So if you, you can bump into surfaces as much as you like and you're not gonna ruin your backing pad. So I'm gonna run this today because I wanna get around these edges and I don't wanna ruin the backing pad because they can be expensive. So it just slots on like that, pretty easy. And then you can see that there, you've got a nice little sort of finger width, I'd say, of gap, maybe about 10 mil. Um, and then, yeah, it's awesome. I'm using 120 grit Abronet Ace. So it's a ceramic compound abrasive with a ceramic coating. And it's just going to enable the uh, it's just going to enable the abrasives to last super long time and get a great finish. So let's get into it. segment on washing down your surfaces so they're actually ready for painting. So sanding is super, super important, absolutely essential step. Another essential step is also washing down your surface. Ideally, you wanna do this a day prior or two days prior, depending on the substrate, so it's not damp the next day when you're trying to paint over it. If you're painting over a wet surface, your paint won't stick to it properly. So that's a very important thing to note. So when we were going through here and AJ was sanding, we actually found that there was a lot of dirt and bits and pieces that we actually couldn't get to with the sander. So we're gonna give everything a quick pressure wash with a little electric washer. We sell those as well. So check out our Jetwave range. We've got some content on there. And yeah, we're gonna clean down the side gate, both of them. The garage door is actually pretty clean already. So let's go for it. Now the next very important and vital step before we paint this door, we're gonna mask up the whole area. And there's not a lot of overspray when it comes to airless spraying because it's purely driven by pressure. We use low pressure tips to reduce 
any mist in the air, but we gotta be careful. You always wanna to aim to mask up more around your area than you think you're gonna hit, because if you do the opposite, it's bloody hard to get paint off things. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna run our iQuip hand masker. This is a lifesaver and I highly recommend it for any DIY project. We're gonna be running our cloth render tape and we're gonna be running our craft paper. We're gonna run some lines along here. We're gonna mask up around the perimeter of the garage door. And then we're gonna overlap that one more time just to give ourselves a bit more surety. So we're not gonna hit the suffetes or we're not gonna hit the driveway as well. Why are we using cloth render tape? This is a perfect tape for render surfaces, for any cementitious surface like Again, concrete slab, pavers, it'll adhere really nicely and we'll be able to just get it done very quickly. Let's get straight into it. Bit of taco tapo. We want to hold it back nice and lattice because what happens is as the pressure from the airless hits the edge of the paper we don't want it to blow back on the substrate so we want it nice and wrapped like a present there ain't no time like the present now any painter who's watching this thinking wow you're painfully slow masking it truly is an art and I respect it because it takes quite a while to get quick. to paint we've got the project bus for our small project it's a it's the beginning sprayer of the diy line and it's perfect for something like this um where you've only got a small garage a bit of fence and then you know you want to do a bit of touch-ups maybe you want to do you know repaint a room or if you want to do this fencing section later it's um it's awesome for that so we're gonna be putting down the Dulux Precision Max Strength Adhesion. Now this is a water-based primer and it's a really heavy duty primer. It's just gonna make sure that whatever we, uh, whatever paint we put down, which is Weather Shield, uh, it's just definitely gonna to stick to the surface and not peel off over time. If you've got a pre-painted surface like we do, the garage, the fencing, then this is a perfect option for going over the top of that and making sure that that paint doesn't peel off over time or you get any moisture underneath. So we're gonna just quickly mix this and then we're gonna strain it into a bucket and then we're gonna prime it through the unit and start spraying. So we've done all the prep work, done the sanding, done the masking, drop sheets. Um, yeah, as Jacob mentioned, we use cloth render tape to put down our craft paper, craft paper to cover up the edges and then just drop sheets on the floor. Yeah, and a little bit of Embo tape, which is your standard use tape. So, I'm just attaching our hose. This is everything that comes standard in the kit. So you've got the Project Plus unit itself. Then you've got seven and a half meters of Duraflex quarter inch hose. This is rated for up to 3000 PSI. I'm just attaching this one here. You also get included with this unit, a SG2 gun. It's got the Rack 5 tip guard on it. So that's the red one. And then it comes with the new True Airless 515 tips. Yet to test these tips in the field on a project like this. So it'll be interesting to see how these work. They are supposed to be the DIY equivalent of your FFLP and your LP tips. So it should be low pressure, less work on the machine, less overspray and a finer finish. But we'll put that to the test and we'll see how it fares up against the FFLP tips. Use my shifter to secure on my hose. 
Whenever you're installing these, you want to make sure that you nip them up pretty tight. Nothing crazy, but just tight enough that they seal. We're going to be putting our suction tube. It's got our strainer on it. This is super important. Make sure that there's no gunk build up on there, that it can you know, breathe properly when it's sucking up paint and that there's no holes so that way you don't suck up anything if you missed anything in the strain so the reason we strain the paint is just to make sure that any sediment or any lumps or hard paint or anything that's in the tin which does happen doesn't get sucked up into your machine because what will happen is it'll get stuck in there and then it's a pain to clean or to fix be on the safe side strain your paint the last time we used this unit we stored it away with the graco pump armor storage solution that just makes sure that nothing gets corroded or you know, worn away. Any units from the Pro X17 up through, you know, the, into the professional range from the 190 and above, they've got leather and PTFE packings in them. So those do need to be lubricated. That's what the pump arm is for. It's to lubricate and it's to be anti-corrosive, stop any rust buildup. So without further ado, let's get the suction tube into the paint. Just wanna make sure that one's fully submerged and let's get our drain tube which is the return tube. So the paint will come through the drain tube. It'll go into the pump. And then when it's in prime, it'll come out of this drain tube. And we just wanna do that. We wanna flush it. So that way we have only paint in the line and the rest of it's clear. So we've got the unit plugged in. Let's make sure that the pressure's off. Turn it on. It's in prime when it is out. When you're leaving the unit, after you've done spraying and you've cleaned it up and you've released and you've released all the pressure, what you wanna do is pop it back down into spray and that's gonna make sure that the, and that's gonna make sure that the spring here on the inside doesn't get worn, otherwise you'll have problems over time. So I've flicked that into prime, I've got it on and I'm just gonna turn up this pressure ever so slightly. Cool. It's, you see that we had some pump armor in there. That's the blue liquid. And then you can see that we are fully primed with paint and good to go. So now we want to put this one back on our suction tube. And every time we do it, we want to make sure that we clip it in nice and secure. Cause as we always say, if for whatever reason it needs to evacuate pressure, or even if you just forget and you actually flick it down into prime under pressure, this is gonna evacuate all the paint straight out of this drain tube and it's gonna go everywhere. And your clean job space that you've prepped is gonna be a mess and it's not fun. So don't do it. Speaking from experience, don't do it. So clip it on and then what we wanna do is we just wanna prime it a little bit more. Perfect. We can flick this into spray. Now, whenever you're spraying, you've got a trigger lock on here. Down is unlocked, up is locked. It's really important for safety reasons to remember to use this. I know sometimes it can be a bit annoying to be constantly flicking it up and down, but if it is under pressure and you've got the trigger lock off and you pull that trigger, you know, you are definitely at risk of injecting yourself with paint. It is high pressure, it's up to 3000 PSI. So it's definitely a risk, a safety hazard. So make sure when you're not spraying, you flick it into lock so you don't accidentally, you know, spray yourself when you're moving around. We need to flush it. So. We're gonna remove our tipping guard. We're gonna engage the trigger in this bucket under no pressure. And then we're gonna slowly wind on the pressure and same thing as the drain tube. As soon as we have paint coming out of here, we know that there is paint all through the line and then we can put back on the tipping guard and start spraying. It's that quick. So, trigger lock on. We just want to wind our guard back on, find the thread. 
Now, the tip guard is made to be two directional, so you can either spray with it upright, and that's gonna put the fan out that way, or you can rotate it, and that's gonna put the spray fan out that way. So basically, the way the guard is shaped, you can see it fans out, that's the way that it's gonna spray. So the fan will spray outwards like that, or if it's this way, and I'm making this look painful, it'll spray out like that. The unit comes standard with a 515. However, there's some new tip sizes in the True Wireless range, and we're gonna be using a 313. For smaller sections or just less output, we don't really, when we're doing the primer, we don't really wanna be putting on, you know, a heavy coat. We just wanna sort of lay it on so that way it sticks, but we don't want it to be heavy or get any runs or anything like that. If you were doing smaller sections as well, maybe like the gutters, having a smaller tip is definitely ideal. So we definitely recommend just picking up a couple of extra tips when you get your unit. It also comes with a spare one seal. It's the little seal in the bottom of the packet. If you're switching between, you know, blue and green tips or something like that, these need to be changed because they are smaller for the fine finish tips. However, going from a true airless tip to a true airless tip, we don't need to change it. So this is a great backup. If you're not sure how to install this or what that looks like, we have a great video on it. So you can check that out. Links in the description or it's above here, wherever Jacob puts it. So check that out. Tips are pretty easy to follow. I'll show you while I've got it off the guard. So they're two directional. Facing this way is the spray fan and then spin it around, face the other way, that's a fast flush function. So when you're spraying, if you get a tip blockage and basically you're holding down the trigger and it just stops spraying, probably a clog. And what you do is you just reverse it into a bucket, release the trigger, and that'll clear that blockage so you can keep spraying. Pretty cool feature. Graco have a bunch of cool features like that. Um, it's what they're known for. Great manufacturing and innovation. That's why we love it. Cool, so I've got that locked on so that way it's not spinning around, it's not moving, not gonna get any leaks out of here. So now we wanna dial in our fan. So what we always recommend is having a little bit of a test section that you can spray on. So I like to start with the smaller tips somewhere in the middle or just past the middle on the pressure dial. And then I'll spray a test bit of cardboard and we're just looking for a nice solid even fan. We don't want any gaps on the side or any solid lines on the either side or just any misting or blockages for that matter. Um, yeah, so let's get that set up. For the purpose of this video, we're gonna test on some craft paper that we've just tacked onto the substrate. So I'll do a couple of passes and just make sure that's fine. But first I need to dial in the pressure. So let's turn that up. Somewhere about there should probably be good with the size tip. That sound, that's what you want. You wanna hear the motor start and then stall. It's called stalling under pressure. So if it keeps running continuously, you've got a problem and you're not gonna get a good spray. Just give us a call if you've got any troubles or if you need any repairs done. Safety off. It's pretty good. It's probably a little bit heavy to be honest. Um, I might dial it back a little bit more. That's looking a lot better. If you can see it, I'm not sure if you can see it, but you can see here it's even, but it's just a little bit heavy. You can see it start to sort of droop and fall. And still, it's a nice even fan. You can see this line's quite solid and also the other line. And when you're spraying, you just want to do a 50% overlap. So lay down the line and then 50%, 50%, and so on and so forth. That'll make sure that you get nice even coverage. The advantage of airless spraying is that it is really fast and you have a really high transfer efficiency. So basically whatever you spray is gonna get sprayed and it doesn't really put too much overspray out in the air. You will see a little bit of mist. However, because it's atomizing at the tip, it's mostly set in the air. So any of the mist that's around is pretty much just wash it off and there's no problems. Let's go. We've done the garage door, we've done the small side fence on the right hand side, 
Now we've got to do the larger side fence on the left hand side. So our hose isn't long enough. Now, in theory, you could get a longer hose, but the Project Plus, I believe, only handles up to 15 meters. So we still wouldn't quite reach. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna roll up the hose a bit, pick it up, move it over and spray that out. Cool thing about the Project Plus is it's super lightweight. I think it weighs about four kilos. Don't quote me on that. We'll put it on the screen in bold lettering if I'm wrong. Thanks, Jacob. Um, but yeah, it's like lifting this up and down is really nothing. So grab our unit, grab our paint. Look at that. Nice little spot for it right here, out of the way. Put our lead off to the side, hose, trigger lock on, making sure. Lay that down and we'll get this plugged in. So we've just switched over to the top coat. It's Dulux Weather Shield in iron stone is the color. So it's gonna tie in nicely, look a lot better than the red that was here. All I've done here is just basically repeated the steps at the beginning. I've given the suction tube and the drain tube a bit of a clean up with some rags. Then I've just flushed it out and put in the suction tube in the top coat. Spare bucket with the undercoat um, or primer, sorry. Prime it through the line until you see your top coat come through. Now we're good to go. Repeat the same process. Same process is the whole process. So trigger lock on. Imagine if the trigger lock was off then. I just spray it everywhere. So we're gonna take off this top guard. And before I do anything, I just wanna make sure that I've got no pressure and that I'm in the spray position. Hold the trigger back here and wind that up to flush out all the primer till I see top coat come through. So let's do that. Trigger lock back on, no pressure on, and I'm just gonna put this guard on. And then what I'm gonna do is because there'll be primer sort of in the tip and tip guard itself is it's gonna give it a quick spray just off the side on this craft paper here, reverse clean. And I'll just hold that trigger in, wind it up. There we go. Trigger lock on, back into spray, build up to pressure. I think that's pretty good. And I'm gonna do a quick test run. Looks great, let's go. They've been on it, jump on the rail. I wrap it, I bag it, I pack it for sale. Got feeling I'll speed out, I hit me to chill. I give it a thrill, I put it on film. Just so I get a plot, that ain't real. Come to my section and flex, we can tell. I got a show and she dipping them nails. I'm flipping my L's, I know they can tell. I did it too major, they hit me for favors. Been hit since the cable was cut in the crater. What's up, only right that I do it. Colossal until I'm a fossil, they want me to fail. Look, we prevail. Jump on your tail, know that they talking, they telling them tales It's not how to tell, they for the sale, yeah Ay, they talk like they got it, but they need to stop it I'm leading with logic, my heartbeat is frosted I seen it, got optics, I need it from Shawty She mean with the top and it's obvious They need him a target, I'm dodging their darts Make them reach for the stars, I'm dumping I'm forcing the pun off the runs I'm moving with caution, I'm saucing my nigga is nothing From nothing to something they'll never be Tycoon and I'm Dre with the thizzle face I'm nothing my section has ever seen Run the ice so I'm clutch, I don't need a screen I'm Curry, I switch it from 30 deep Do the pin in the pad like a surgery She been curving you just to flat with me Totally tucked off, put the jewels out I just in a home with a full mouth I'm a rare breed when the moon out I'ma stop playing by the rules now I been ran plays, need a new route Queen says she needs space in a new house Mom told me that she pray for the kid every day No wonder I'm getting paid for the tunes now If they ain't ass, bitch, 
I'm on the rail, I wrap it, I bag it, I pack it for sale. Got feeling I speed out, I hit me a tail, I give it a thrill, I put it on real. Cause the shot get a plot, that ain't real. Come to my section, they flex, we can tell. A little bit of an update where we're at. We've just done the first top coat on everything. So we've done the left side fence, got a few runs there, maybe just went a bit heavy in some spots. So what we'll do is we'll let that tack off and then we'll come back with the sander, just flatten that out. And then before we do our second coat, garage looking good. Obviously you can see a few light spots, but again, we're doing two coats. So when we come back through, that's gonna look absolutely great. And we've got the right hand side here, just the smaller side, no runs on this side, which is great because I was a little bit unsure in a few spots at, at times, but yeah, a little bit light here and there, but again, doesn't matter too much because we're gonna be going over with a second coat. You'll see, this is why you can never be too safe. As you can see here, no overspray. So that's not covered and I'm spraying straight through and I've got no overspray here, but here where I've actually sprayed in the direction of, I've got spray. We're gonna show you how to get that off, but once we've all finished and we've taken it all apart, we're going to show you how to get that off. So super easy. Don't be too scared. Unless it's a car, then be scared. But we moved the cars out, so it's great. It's a really hot day today. It's about 35, I don't know, 36 degrees. It has a dry off time of about 30 minutes. Um, so we'll keep checking it probably after about 15 minutes. We'll check it every five minutes. And as soon as it's not tacky anymore, we'll hit that second coat and then pack up, go home, swim in the pool drink a beer, relax, let's go. Second coat of the top coat done. So now we're gonna demask, admire our great work. So let's get into it. Mm -hmm. 